In this video, we're going over the people aspect of the Worship Tools Planning app, which is a service planning and volunteer scheduling app for church leaders and volunteers. With planning, church leaders can plan out weekly services and schedule volunteers to various roles on those services. Then, volunteers can go in and accept or decline their role invitations, review the service order, and access song materials if they're on the worship team. Now, this video is specifically for admins and leaders, but we do have a video on our YouTube channel and in our support docs for how to get around planning as a volunteer. I'll link it in the description box for anyone who'd like to see it. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start on the people page in planning. If you're on the web version like I am, you can get to the people page from this left navigation menu. If you're on the mobile app, your navigation bar should be along the bottom of your screen. If you're not seeing the people page at all, it means that you don't have the right permission level and the video that I mentioned earlier for volunteers might be a better fit for you. Of course, you're more than welcome to continue watching this one, but keep in mind that you might not be able to follow along with everything demonstrated in this video. That being said, let's move along. Here we have the people page, which shows you all the active users on your church account. Each person listed here has their own login that can be used to sign into planning, accept roles, view services, etc. Now as far as what they have access to when they sign in, that's dependent on their permission levels. Each person will also have some roles that they can be assigned to. Let's click on this user to dive a little deeper. Here we have Amanda's user profile. Her information is on the left, and over to the right or bottom if you're on the mobile app, you'll see four different tabs. Let's click edit to see what we can do in here as an admin. Now the first thing you might notice is that you aren't able to edit the information on the left. These fields can only be updated by the owner of the profile themselves. Moving to the right, the first tab we have is the roles tab, and you can see that Amanda is not currently associated with any roles. We'll need to give her some so that she can be scheduled to the right places in our services. Now for this example's sake, let's say that she volunteers as a piano slash keys player and as a greeter. I'll go through and select those roles for her profile, but notice that we don't quite have a position made for greeter yet. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but for now let's close out of this window, and you can see that piano and keys have been added to her profile. Moving to the next tab, unavailable dates are exactly what they sound like. If Amanda knows that she'll be out of town for the first week of August, she can open up planning and submit those unavailable dates herself, or have an admin submit it for her as I'm demonstrating on the screen. Having your team members submit their unavailable dates ahead of time can be really helpful for leaders as you go and schedule out the services. Lastly, we have the permissions tab where you can update permission levels for the user. Currently, Amanda is a scheduled viewer, which is the lowest permission level. Scheduled viewers can only see services that they're invited to, so they can't see any other songs, services, people, etc. As you go further down the list, you increase the user's permission, unlocking more access to various features and editing power for this user. And if you have the Worship Tools Pro Plus plan, you can also utilize these advanced permission options. We have a dedicated article and video about permission levels, including the Pro Plus advanced permissions, so please check out those resources, which I've linked in the description box below. And for this demo, let's just modify Amanda's permission to viewer and save all the changes that we've made to her profile so far. And now that those changes are saved, if we go back through each of these tabs, we can see those roles, unavailable dates, and permissions changes that I just made. Next, let's go back to the main people page and add a new user. To do this, we're going to click Add Person. On the next page, you'll fill out their name and email address and set their permission level. These fields are very important, so always double check spelling, make sure you have the correct email address, and that you're setting them to the right level of access. We also recommend that you go ahead and assign their roles now so that you don't need to come back and do that later, and you can enter their unavailable dates if you have that information. If everything looks good, click Save, and they'll receive an email invitation to join your account. Now if this person already created a login prior to you adding them to the account, their existing login will just be linked to your account and they can sign in with their existing email and password. If this person has not created a login yet, they'll be prompted to complete registration by setting a password to go with the email address that you entered for them. This is why it's very important to check for typos and make sure that you're adding them with the correct email address, especially if that person owns multiple email addresses. If for some reason this person is unable to set a password through the invitation email, they can go through the reset password flow on the sign-in page to create a new password. Next, we'll look at the roles page. All the roles and role groups listed here are fully customizable to suit your church. So if you don't have an entire tech team, you can delete the group if you'd like to, or if you need to add a greeter to the welcome team, you can do that from here and assign people to that role right from here as well. Once your people and all your roles are situated, you're ready to finally start scheduling people to services. 
I'm going to open up this August service and we'll head straight to the People tab. Now up until this point, I demonstrated things that were only available to admins and editors, but this page is also available to schedulers. Schedulers is a permission level and they kind of serve as team leads. So if you have different leaders that oversee your tech team, pulpit team, kids team, etc., you can give them scheduler permissions to assign roles for services without giving them too much access to other things on the account. So the content from this point on in the video is relevant to admins, editors, and schedulers. When you're scheduling services, you do not have to fill out every single rule that's listed here. For example, one week you might have a three-piece acoustic band, and the next week you might have a full eight-piece band. All you need to do to schedule people to a service is click Add Person and select the person you'd like in that role. Now, notice that Amanda is grayed out compared to the other users, and that's because of those unavailable dates that we saved on her profile, telling us that she's not going to be available to serve this date. So with that information, we'll just pick a different Keys volunteer to serve this week. As you continue scheduling, you might realize that there are some roles that conflict with other roles. While someone may be able to serve as a greeter and be part of the prayer team on the same service, the drummer probably can't also run lyric slides as he's playing. To check for conflicting role assignments, you can use this calendar icon to see when this person has been scheduled. It will show you their past, present, and future assignments to help you with your scheduling, especially when you have multiple leaders scheduling for different teams with the same pool of volunteers. When all your roles are filled, you can send out the invitations to the users. This invite button sends an invitation to this individual for this role only, while this invite button sends invites out for everybody placed on the schedule so far, but you can filter it by teams if needed. Sending the invitations out fixes those people into those roles, but also puts the ball into their court to either accept or decline those assignments. If they decline, you can simply replace them with a different volunteer. You will receive notifications when people accept and decline so that you are on top of scheduling, and those notification settings can be managed in your planning settings. If your church does something like monthly or quarterly teams that cycle throughout the year, one thing that you can do to cut down your workload is to assign a team to a service, then clone that service for the weeks that that team will be serving. To do this, click clone and then make sure you check the box that says copy scheduled people. On the newly cloned schedule, you'll notice that all your people are in the right roles and placed on the schedule with invitations pending so that you can send them out whenever you're ready. Keep in mind that cloning a service also clones the service order, so make sure that you're either using an empty service or working with whoever is in charge of preparing the weekly service plans to make sure that the right service order is being copied. Last but not least, you can also use the scheduling matrix to schedule people to multiple services at a time. Depending on your screen size, you'll be able to view up to four services on one page. This is really great for not only scheduling people quickly, but also making sure that people aren't serving too often or too little. We are now at the end of this video and you've learned how to add people to your team, customize roles, and schedule people to services. To learn even more about planning or any of the other Worship Tools apps, check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and feel free to contact us at support at worshiptools.com with any questions. Thank you for watching this video and we hope you enjoy the planning app.